G'day shipmates and welcome back to my channel. Yes, I've got the cap on, I've oiled the beard, I've got my sailor suit on, I am ready to talk about sailing ships. Now I've built a few, as you know if you watch my channel, <laughs> I have built quite a few ships and a lot of them have been, you know, fully rigged sailing ships, okay? And I'm currently doing that uh, French, you know, St. Louis, okay, by Airfix. Thoroughly enjoying that. That's an early 17th century ship. Now that's worth keeping in mind because I was at PX, that's a big model exchange thing in Brisbane, right? Went down there, sold a whole lot of kits, made quite a bit of money and thought, oh, I'll just have a look around. And lo and behold, a guy come up to me and said, you're Harry Houdini, you like building bloody sailing ships, don't you? You like hella kits? Well, how about one of these? <laughs> okay, so he had this kit at a very reasonable price. Okay, it is the Lark Siren. Now, yes, much maligned. Everyone says it's fake. Well, you know, there's no way it didn't exist. Well, not as Heller has done it. There certainly have been sirens, okay? And there certainly was one that this could be mm, if we sort of fixed it, all right? So, yeah, that ship kit often laughed at because it's wrong. It's very wrong, okay? But I also picked up at the same time this one. Indomptable, right? In, indomptable, right? Yeah, like, like indomitable, as we would say in English, right? But the French, they say indomptable, right? Okay, yeah. And it just means cannot be dominated, right? Now, this one also. Everyone goes, ah, it's fictitious. It didn't exist. There's no such thing. Well, um, certainly didn't have this big stupid bum on it, right? That's absurd. That's ridiculous. That is just completely fanciful. There is no French ship that had a rear end like that. That is just crazy. It doesn't look like that at all, right? Somebody just made that up, all right? But the Indomitable did exist. At least it was laid down, but it was never finished, okay? At least the one sort of like this. There was one later on, it was a frigate, okay? And, um, or at least a, a fourth rate. And uh, it's completely different, so it, it really couldn't be this one. That's quite famous. That's not until the late 18th century, early 19th century, even heading the Napoleonic eras, right? Well, this wasn't. There was a ship like this from the Seven Years' War, okay? And it's very similar, very, very similar to the Royal Lewis, which I've got. So we can do a direct comparison. And in fact, uncannily, half the sprues in this are labelled Royal Lewis. So you see where I'm going? This could be fixed. Same with the Cyrene, right? The Cyrene has a kit called the Phoenix by Heller. And in fact, a number of the sprues in the Cyrene kit are labelled Phoenix. Now, the Phoenix was only out for a short while. It only was the first one that released like that. And then they made the version for Cyrene. And then from then on, Cyrene is all that Heller made, okay? Which is rather strange because Cyrene, as they've done it, did not exist. The Phoenix was more accurate of ships for the late 17th century. So... Can we fix the siren? Can we fix La Dame de Paul? Right? Yes, we can. And I'll show you how. Roll the music. <laughs> Let's start with the siren. Now, it is a big box, this one. It's unusual. This is a special edition, and it's actually a square box. And it's quite tall. So normally your boxes would be a lot longer, you know. They're usually more of a rectangle shape and um, not quite as high. Now this is an unusual one. And the reason is, well, it opens up. Look at that. And you get humbrol paints, all the paints you can need, you get little brushes. You get cordage to your rigging. You even get some polystyrene cement. There you go. So it's a lovely little package. It's quite a collector's item on its own, but I'm still going to build it, you know. And this is um, rather clever, this little uh, see-through window here. So you've got a hull half, which joins on then to this drawing of, of the ship. Now this artwork is rather nice, and you see pictures of the kit parts, and you come down to the top area, and you see some things that are the cause of concern. These parts are unique to the siren. And they're not in the Phoenix. And they're wrong. <laughs> they're completely wrong and fanciful. And these parts here as well. Alright. They're all for that ridiculous rear end. And most of those are wrong. They're just completely fanciful. 
they're absurd. That's not how these kind of ships work. Is have a look inside this box and then I can go through the parts, point out the ones that just are crazy and you don't even need them and then show you the solutions to making this into a siren that actually could have existed. This is the contents of that box, it just slides out. A bit ungainly to show on camera, so I've just removed that so we can see what's going on. Now, I need to qualify at this point. I'm not really rivet counting, okay? I'm more interested in accuracy, and if I built this ship, I'd like it to look reasonable. I'd like it to look less cartoonish. If you want to build the siren out of the box exactly as hell has given it to you, fine, go for it, no problem at all. I wouldn't pick your ship apart, all right? But for me, I was going, well, it's just not right. And that's why I did the research. I went, let me have a look and see what's going on here. Is it just a made up ship or not? Well, no, there is some element of truth in this. So what I'm saying is there are the parts in this kit that you could make a siren that actually existed. And that's all. So if you're after a, a real ship, you know, if you're saying, well, I'm not going to buy that siren because it's not a real ship. Well, no, there is a real ship in this box. We've just got to find it, and that's what I'm going to do in this video. All right. The hull half is quite nice. I mean, this is usual sort of hella stuff. They're not bad. They're not bad at all. The shape is fairly true for a ship of that period. All right. It's got a few little yellow spots on there. Oh, the dreaded yellow spot. The, um, the planks are always over-exaggerated. That's typical hella, okay? A lot of people sand those down, and then you can rescribe them, not even worry about them, just basically paint your own wood grain in. I wouldn't worry too much. It's 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 not far off. It's worse on the decks. I agree that the decks are horrible. I'd, I'd get away with that, just paint the colours in. It wouldn't worry me. But look at all the, the gun ports we've got. And this is an interesting thing at this point, right? We need to work out how many guns this ship has. And that will give us clues as to which siren it should be. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 there, right? Thirteen there and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten there. All right. Ten, thirteen, and fourteen. All right. So we've got thirty-seven according to that. Which would mean you've got seventy-two guns. That's actually quite a lot. It would probably be a sixty-four gun ship, and later on it might have had up to sixty-eight guns. Seventy-four. Mm, that's sort of pushing it for this kind of ship but that gives us an idea of the range we should look for so it's basically going to be a second rate okay it's not a hundred gun ship it's going to be in that under 80 guns probably more like 64 gun which would be a good second rate for late 17th century early 18th century so that's something to look at it for but the railings are all there they're very good I mean compared if you had a look at the St. Louis and all the flash and everything was on that we've got none of that the kit is fairly clean. It's just a little bit grubby. It's been sitting in storage and I'd need to get to that with some detergent. The um, stem, that's the stem there and there's the prow. That's worth looking at because unlike my St. Louis, which has the big pointy galley prow, right? Big pointy one, here's a picture. So you can compare. This is not like that. So this can't be an early 17th century ship because the early ones like the St. Louis and like the La Caron, right? Uh, I kept saying Caroni, but you're not supposed to pronounce the E at the end, so Caron, right? Those ships, which were based on Dutch ships, they've all got the big, long, pointy prow, okay? More like a galley. But later on, they were reduced to more of the bluff, right? Less, less pointy, more sort of the round. And that is typical of late 17th century um, ships and basically even the British and the well it would have been the English I always say British but they weren't British then they were English English and French ships were like that and I think the Dutch follow suit afterwards all right let's look at the rest of the kit the hull halves fit together fairly well actually just a quick dry fit I need a little bit of clean up it's not too bad and if we do some little investigation here and we measure the length normally you'll measure the length Pretty well around the waterline, or strictly they didn't have waterlines back then, but where the water would have been, it's about 35 centimetres long. Now this is supposed to be a 1 to 150 scale kit. So we're looking at about 46 to 48 metre long ship. It's 
So that's our next clue. So again, under 80 guns, 46 metre long ship, the, um, the bow tells us that it is late 17th century. Okay, so we've got some clues as to what this ship should have been. You get the usual vac form, and you've actually got some groovy little flags here, which, um, you know, you've got to put some decals or some stickers or something on those. But they're nicely formed. I mean, they're not too bad. If you wanted to use the vac form stuff, it's there, but I'm not interested in any of that. But the furled ones are very comical. Right? They're supposed to be furled sails. So, um, no. It would be much easier to make those out of cloth and fill them up yourself and then just reproduce those out of cloth as well. And the same with the flags, I could make those out of cloth. So I would do that. If I'm putting sails in this thing, I wouldn't use this. The parts in the box are typical Heller. They're fairly clean. There's, there's virtually no flash. There's nothing like that bounty kit or the airfix kit. There's no flash. It's very clean. And this is not an old, like early 1960s or 70s press. This is a special edition Rebox early 2000s, right? But still, the Heller uh, version is clean, right? As clean as you get on the MA kit. And I've reviewed some MA kits. It's not too bad. So I'm not seeing any flash at all. There probably will be some somewhere, especially when you get to things, you know, fine stuff or all the other kits like the Airfix and the, the Rebel kit. It's all pretty horrible. But no, they're lovely. The, the mouldings are good as far as the windows go. All right? I, I know it's in the plastic, but but maybe you can see detail. I'll get them out in a second. We have to talk about things in more detail. But look at this mermaid. Okay, now, <laughs> again, 1 to 150 scale mermaid, uh, figurehead, and she is 70, almost 80, we'll create 80 long. All right, so 1 150 scale means she's 12 meters long. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no. No, she would have been two or three metres at the most for a figurehead. 12 metre long figurehead, I mean, come on. It's ridiculous. It just doesn't happen. It's, it's, it's absurd. And some of these parts here, not correct. We'll, we'll look at those. We'll look at those. Uh, there's a little piece here with, with quite a lot of engraving on. It's not too bad. It sort of could be used. But there's too much balcony, too much stuff. And these things... They sit either side on the front of the hull if you make the kit up as they want. Uh, yes, there are these sort of things. As you can see, there's a photo here of my St. Louis. Early 17th century French ships did have these sort of little um, castle posts up on the up on the forecastle, you know, the little towers, castle towers, right? Uh, yeah, but um, in proportion, I mean, the ones on my St. Louis are literally half as bulbous as this. These are an absurd size, right? These are the size they'd be if this was a 1100 scale kit, which it isn't. So, no, they are overscale, obtuse, and also incorrect. You have the channels with the um, dead eyes. They are actually very nicely molded. And you've got, you've got blocks and you've got all kinds of small parts. You've got the... Um, Fighting platforms or crow's nest, right? They're they're actually all nice. It's a nice kit. I mean, the little, the, the small boats, right? They're they're very nicely molded. Everything is very clean. As a kit, it, it's quite beautiful. It's quite nice, and you would look forward to building it. These anchors, all the parts of the anchors, they're quite good. Your masts, you've got the usual hella thing where the masts are in two halves. But the idea is then is you put some wire inside of it, and you give it some strength. And that's, um, that's one thing that I do. It'll stop that the bendiness. It gives it a lot more strength when you put them in. Because, I mean, this is going to be quite tall. It's going to be quite quite high. It's going to be basically, well, you know, um, at least a foot, foot and a half tall. So about four, you know, 40 centimetres. Uh, the yards, well, they're going to be a little bit soft. But, um, you know, that's, that's how things are. Now, this is where the bone of contention is often, is the planks on the deck. And they are an absurd molded size because they've got those at about three millimeters, right? So three millimeters in this scale means each plank is nearly is nearly half a meter wide. Um, that's a wide plank. That's a very very wide plank. Uh, usually for this scale, you'd probably be looking at more like you know one and a half or two millimeters at the most. So 
I would replace those with my veneer wood planks as I've done in the other kits like I did on the uh, St. Louis right and that would look a lot nicer but um, three four millimeters for a plank yeah that's where your problem is it's just it's 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 ridiculous but that's easy enough to fix and again you could fill this and sand it and because you know there's no grievous on here basically it's a nice fairly hot flat area so it is fixable either way you want to go to do that but the parts are good I mean that's the thing you, you can't discount the kit on the moldings they're quite good it's just the absurdity of what they're going to do with that rear end now this of course is just a jumble thing this is the their um rat line rigging tool which is quite a good tool if you want to use it i don't because i use my rat line harp that i invented and then you've got all the cannons here and um their cradles everything like that they're all in here and are they the half ones no thank goodness they are single piece yeah in the um some of the other kits every cannon is in two halves and so you've got a, you know you've got 100 110 cannons on the ships like the victory and each one's two pieces uh, you've got to glue that together and sand them round that's a pain these aren't they're um each cannon is single that's quite good yeah so the parts you know the parts are okay that's the thing now this has got protected later on these are pieces to make your flags up okay because they didn't have the red white and blue at this stage that's later Okay, I think that comes in with Napoleon. Uh, you correct me if I'm wrong, but the red, white, and blue French flag doesn't exist yet. Okay, so the French flag is basically a whole lot of these chevrons and things over a blue or a white background. That's what they have. And you've got the usual little blue and blue and blue. Okay, let's have a look at the instructions, and I'll pull out parts, and I'll show you which bits are wrong, and I'll compare that to instructions which I have for the Phoenix. And then we can see how... With very simple modification, using kids' parts, we can actually turn the siren into an, a ship that really existed. I have the parts out that we're going to need to talk about, and that's basically it. Most of the stuff is okay. And here's the instructions. Now, they're actually not too bad for Hella. Usually, her instructions are a bit of a nightmare, but they've actually made an effort in this special edition. So it's just a, uh, it's actually a booklet. When you usually get a big, big fold out plan and it's a vomit and there's stuff everywhere and it's really hard to follow. This is actually not too bad, which is going to make it easier to do what we want to do. So one thing we can see here is, here's the photo of the kit and you can see that absolutely absurd rear end. We're going to change all that. That's just not how it is. And there's the silly little tower that goes over here on the forecastle, right? Again, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, we'll remove that. There's, there's no point in that. It's almost Spanish in its style. I mean, the Spanish had great big hulking rear ends. And, you know, this is just not correct for a ship that would have been late 17th century. Not correct at all. So, instructions are quite good. They've got all these, you know, don't glue, don't glue. You get painting guys as you go along. You know, it's quite good, although everything's just blue and white. Kind of like a dragon kit, you know, where guess the colour, but at least it's sort of marked, you know. Um, light blue is rouge, which is red, of course. The um, darker blue is not, which is going to be basically, um, that's, uh, is that black here? Yeah. Grey is actually white. <clears throat> you know, why don't you use white for white? Why don't you use black for black? Anyhow, never mind. The lighter blue, the puffy blue over here, that is actually blue. <laughs> French. Okay, now the first thing is, your hull halves go together and you need this little part four. And I have cut that from the sprue okay so this fits in to the stern like so okay and that's fine that's terrific and if you're building the phoenix that's as tall as she goes okay let me see if i can do a little dry fit here hull halves together and this should kind of slot into into there right, so and it goes so that is a nice profile that is exactly what the stern of a 17th century ship would look like okay so we have that part because that's the same part that gets used in the phoenix kit all right so remember that that solves that problem straight away okay it's just that later on this gets absurd so Yep, you build it up, you build up all your cannons, usual sort of thing, okay, if you've ever done one of these things, include it on the stand, tie everything in, 
put your decks in okay they go in nice and easily the beauty is you have a gun deck which is good for the lower guns they're not just all stick on okay so you've got those guns that's good everything's fine i mean you, you're kind of ripping along terrifically there's nothing wrong with any of this it's all quite good and it's all quite easy i'll go into more detail when i actually build the kit you build up your um little well they're not lifeboats so much as but basically the um the boats they used to go to shore okay so they're all in there now it's at step 26 when things go crazy because these are the parts they want for you to build up this massive derriere this absurd gilded bottom for this ship that is just well it's just crazy and i'm not going to do it so how do we solve this well it's pretty easy actually what we have to do is have a look at how the phoenix which is the kit they had well that's actually my bounty <laughs> here's a phoenix so the phoenix doesn't look too bad does it you'll notice you've got one two three and there's the fourth of the gun decks so if we have a look at that hull one two three and there's the fourth oh that's it that's all you need you only need that that's already there so that's good what hella has you do over here in 31 is start adding these huge extensions to that pushing up the stern of the ship and making this absolutely top heavy ridiculous little sort of poop area okay uh, sort of a poop deck with the rest of it no need no need for that at all you don't need that you also if you have a quick look yes there are railings here there are windows um, there are columns here but then the railings end at that level and then you have basically a little stern piece there and you only go as high as say without the extension as high as this little grey part okay so this little grey part that is that okay that's that that's it so if we stick to that height can we find parts to fit yes we can we can so we totally ignore all of these okay which are these add-ons they have you put on here don't do any of that don't do that at all what we can do we can put in the stern windows they're good right? no problem there we can put in the lower gallery okay what we don't do is add all these stupid things that go on the top there so if you have a look this can go in that's fine this can go in that's fine okay and um that'll all go together around the sides no problems at all but it's when we get to the second layer and they want to add extra gilded piece of rest of it ignore that you would put in those windows all right and again they want you to add the poop deck no nope, don't do that don't add the poop deck it's ridiculous don't add these side little gunnels here that push it way out of shape don't do any of that throw all that away just end there now you will need this piece okay which is very pretty but that will fit on here with a bit of adaption all right because we still would have a balcony and then another balcony and so we still could do something with this might have to sort of cut the bottom of it off but we could still use that and we would have the railing and that would still look good okay so that would be on here so we might just sort of shorten this a little bit and it will fit perfectly all right you won't use the mermaid that is crazy okay at your bow here your figurehead is going to be about that long <laughs> a third of that all right as i said that is just so long so you could probably find a little figurehead or a little mermaid a little model or something or even make something up yourself and put that on uh, because there's no way i'm putting that stupid giant mermaid on there so to summarize the stern area we won't need that second lot of railing we don't need these upper railings this piece here can go down lower we would keep the lamps we will keep the bit of railing but it'll all be pushed down to basically that height so all of this throw away no point don't need it looks ridiculous we don't need that great big huge bulbous derriere okay go to the bow and this is all okay these pieces are all right that's fine those um, little whalebone frames there they go in that's terrific now here we have a point of contention this part is absurd all right so this supposedly are the bow rails okay and they've been all joined together now it'll take a bit of trickiness with a knife but if you actually cut them all out 
you can get what it looks like on Phoenix. Let me show you a picture. Now this is a little rigging diagram from hismodel.com, which I highly recommend. It's a great site. They sell a lot of really good kits, but they also have all the uh, instructions and they have diagrams for rigging, which is really helpful. And they even sell the complete rigging kits, like every uh, cordage you'll need and all the blocks you require. It is terrific. If you have a look here, okay, if you compare the two, that's how it should look. It should basically be open. Well, it's only this piece we're looking at. Okay, it's only this piece. Whereas what you've got there is all solid. So you could cut that open. Now, I probably, the easiest way would be actually just cut it all the way along there, cut it along there, and remove these two pieces, and then work out what you're going to do between. So you would get something similar. Or you could just simply scratch that out of um, some stock styrene. Really not hard to do. Uh, those sort of rubs. I know it kind of looks ornate, you might not be able to get it to that level, but it would certainly look a lot better. And also see, there's a Phoenix figurehead. See, it's only this big. It only sits from here to here. It's only this big. One third the size of that stupid mermaid. Alright, so this is doable because most of what you want in the kit is already there. Now these are those little towers at the front and they would just click in all right so they will click in there it's about now you don't need them we might need to do some cleanup depending on how our head rails go might need to lose this little piece here i doubt it though because these parts would have been the same for both of them but i'm sure i saw somewhere where it was basically branded both phoenix and siren so you know it was interesting the parts are for both ships so obviously but the the, the siren's got all this extra for the derriere and this stupid castle for the front and it's all out of scale and the ridiculous mermaid completely out of scale completely wrong wouldn't do it so that's basically everything there your masts and your yards they'll still be the same they're fine there's no problems there okay and you'll still end up with a nice ship so it should end up looking more like this okay so again um they've even well, they haven't quite closed it in, but you can see your, your stern, you'll just have two balconies. None of this stuff is extended there. It'll come down. You'll still use the same lanterns and your head rails will be there and there's no need at all for that tower. That will turn this horrible, big, fat <laughs> ugliness into a really nice French warship. Let's have a very quick look now at the Indomitable. Okay, indomitable. Same again, great big box, okay? Very hard to get the whole thing in screen. And again, it opens and you get that tricky little arrangement where the um, plastic hull is popping through from the artwork, okay? And again, all these photos of these things that they want to add on to make it pretty. Rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. Wouldn't use any of it. And here, the stern, absurd. That is just completely wrong for a French ship that would have been early 18th century, okay? It has to be because of the way it's configured, the amount of guns. This is a 1-200 scale ship, okay? And that's important as we open the box and start to look at the hull, because this hull is the same length. So if it's a 35 uh, centimetre hull, right? At 1-200 scale, that means it's 70 metres long. Hmm, interesting. So again, you've got the uh, hull half here in the box you get complete paint set it's all very nicely packaged okay and you get everything there so let's get into this and have a good look sales not bad not bad but not enough and not as good as its sister ship kit the royal lewis royal lewis i'll show you in a sec sales are fantastic okay here we go oh this is where i've seen it you have Lee Gladiator and Le Indomitable, right? You got both in there, so the parts for both are on here. And the Gladiator is a, well, there is a Gladiator, but it's nothing like this. And again, you've got all these excessive parts, and again, you know, everything is added to the hull to make it taller. There's no need. And we'll go into that in more detail in a sec. Instructions are good, see what they were. Again, you've got all the cannons, everything like that. 
they're quite good all right so same again here this time we've got the um the rigging making tool is here in with the brown plastic you've got much much nicer decks actually on this one but really all i want to talk about is what's wrong with the kit and how we can fix it the quality of the kit's fine don't get me wrong you can still build this kit out of the box it's terrific it's fine you'd still get a nice you get a nice result but if you wanted something that's actually accurate for the period and you know correct there's only a few little changes we have to make and let me show you how easy that can be now this is a hella kit well another hella kit raw lewis one two hundred skull and look at this turn that's a nice turn it's it's elegant it's not too tall it's exactly right for the period it has enough gilding without going crazy it's it's um you know it's restrained and it's good and it's got about 110 guns that's terrific our indomitable also has about 110 guns okay but it has this absolutely stupid stern now this is the hull half from the indomptable right okay exactly as it came out of the kit a little bit grubby i don't know what happens it looks like people have been eating chocolate all right so a couple of layers here for cannons a couple of false false decks set in there so at least you can put your your cannons through which is rather lovely you've got th three solid layers of of guns right and then you've got your, your upper guns and they um the stack here is solid all the way through which is different to the the 64 gun or the 80 gun second rates which you've really only got guns here and guns here and it's only these two that you've got a reasonable amount now this is the hull half from my Royal Lewis kit. It's a little bit the same. It's a bit grubby. Don't know what it is about these kits. People need Mars bars by these things. Okay, now surprise, surprise. Okay, and you can see the different colours. That's because they're from different kits. Voila. It's the same kit. Huh? Absolutely identical. At least the hull is right in fact the hull is the decks are the guns are the sails well there are more sails in my um royal lewis kit quite frankly they, they've really gone to town there's a hell of a lot more they've got all like the um the triangular um between sprit sails whatever they call them between the the masts okay they're all there as well you can really go to town and put a lot of sails on the thing is what they've done with both the siren and the Indomitable is taken old kits, change things on them to supposedly value add, so that you've got supposedly a new model, so you go out and buy the same thing again. You don't need to. These are usual sort of heller instructions. As I said, pages and pages and on and on they go, All right? But anyhow, um, at least we get a diagram there, so it'll show you what we've got to do. Now, the Royal Lewis was put down in 1758. The Indomptable was put down in 1759. Noticing something here? They were slightly different in design. They had two different um, designers. But essentially, they were building the same sort of specs and they would have just had slightly different, um, you know, architecture. And they would have probably had tiny different features. But they would have been basically the same. It was that period. It was the Seven Years' War. And these were big first rate uh, 110 gunships they were essentially the same same period same thing roughly the same okay but it wouldn't look like that that is kind of a very fanciful pirates of the caribbean type sort of stupid stern and there's no way you would have those windows like that down there that is crazy and it just doesn't work it's just stupid okay you can see the stern here and how it goes together on the raw looks now you could spend a lot of time fixing that part and you could get close you could get close but in my case i'm just going to simply make a cast of the part for the royal lewis here is what the royal lewis stern looks like okay so that would fit onto either of these so that is what you would have it's simple it's elegant it's quite nice okay whereas if you <laughs> build this monster um, it's horrible it's just horrible it goes up again there are extensions here again you don't need them 
you don't need them. The the correct ship would not have those. Again, wrong for the period. Again, the head rails, absurd. They've gone and put, this is for the gladiator, these are all shields, right? And the, and the gladiator figurehead, okay, again, it's three times the size it should be. Absolutely crazy. You could probably just cut it down to that bit, just the torso, give it a sandbag, and that wouldn't be bad. You could probably use that. But it's wrong. It's, it's just totally wrong. So again, I'd rip out all the center of the head rails, and that would be correct. And I would simply, well, there's not much similarity here. There's not much that you can save. You would need to have the luxury, as I have, of the kit part or be willing to scratch. In my case, because I have both kits, I could do a cast of this. I'll do a little uh, cast using my um, blue stuff and my um, UV drying resin, and I'll be able to make that part. So I'm lucky in that respect. That will save this ship. Uh, it's not as an easy save as for the Siren, okay? Sorry, unless you can use the kit parts. But Indomitable, you can. And then you get the ship from the mid-18th century. I'm sorry if you've got this kit and you've got this horrible derriere. Um, yeah, simply just build it low again. Just build it to that height and see what you can cut out of that and just make yourself a lower stern area and maybe put a few little sort of railings and things on or whatever. And it might, you know, it might come up good. It certainly look a lot better than it is. And it'll be closer to how the ship was really built. So there you have it. These two kits need not be a laughing stock. Indomitable did exist, it was laid down, it was just never finished, okay? And Siren, yes, there is a Siren that is correct, and it's really more like the Phoenix. The Phoenix existed, okay? The Phoenix was out early 18th century, but this was very much at the end of the 17th century. Very, very similar in design. So we can take clues from the Phoenix and we can fix the Siren. And then she won't have a stupid bum, okay? <laughs> We'll get rid of that derriere because it is absurd, right? It's just stupid. Sure, should have some railing shirts and things, but it shouldn't be like that. Admittedly, the 17th century ships are more gilded. And I think that's what they were trying to do. And like with the Indomitable, yeah, there's a bit of gilding on it. A bit less as you go into the 18th century, less gilding. And then as you go into the 19th century, right, with the Napoleonic Wars, very austere. Get rid of all the gold, get rid of all that, paint the ships black and white, that's it, you know? Because uh, Napoleon says, you know, let them eat cake. No, he didn't. Who said that? Marie Antoinette. You get my... <laughs> anyway, it was that period where Napoleon basically French in the Napoleonic era, right? Everything was less like the royals with all the waste and the excess, okay? But we're not talking about that. It couldn't be the Napoleonic one, right? No. It has to be one of the ships in the beginning of that, you know, in that seventh year's war period. And the same with Cyrene. That has to be during Louis the Fourteenth. okay? The Cyrene and the Phoenix around the Louis the Fourteenth period. And so they're a bit more ornate than this, uh, but not absurdly so with huge, great big hanging out, bloody, you know, cafeterias <laughs> at the rear end. No, no, that's just stupid. But as I showed, the parts are in each kit to fix it if you know what to do. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. All right. If you do enjoy my videos, look, hit that like button, please. <laughs> it really helps the algorithm and it gets my videos noticed, okay? And comment, just be respectful about it, okay? Tell me jokes. Tell me something funny. I love that, okay? Now, um, you can also these days hit this fabulous new button called thanks, right? Super thanks, right? It is super because if you like my video and you want to throw me a few shekels, right? Or a few pesos or whatever, whatever Kwanzas, whatever you're using, right? You can click that button and just flick me a few of your national coins and it really helps me out. It gives me the money to buy things like this, okay? And you can also subscribe to my channel and then you won't miss any videos. You can get onto Patreon and get onto YouTube. Then you see my videos early and advert free. That's great. Plus there's a whole lot of more scuttlebutt and stuff that goes on there. And you get to vote on things like this. This was a Patreon chosen video. I said to them, would you like a comparison? Would you like to see what to do? They said, yes, we do the video. So that's the thing. If you want to say what's happening on my channel, you need to be a Patreon or a YouTube member. All right. Well, that's it. That's enough. I've had enough. I think I need a curry. <laughs> All right. It's goodbye from Australia. And it's Huru from Harry Houdini. <laughs>